Hey everybody, welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns. Today I want to show you guys the externally adjustable inline regulator from Huma. That's this guy right here. Before I get into it though, I want to invite you guys to hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and do all those things that helps my channel grow. And I thank you very much for that. Also, don't forget, I'm on Airgun 101, so you can head on over to the 101 to check out my other videos, as well as videos from shooters from all over the world. So, the inline regulator, what does it do? Well, it takes the pressure from this, your, your supply bottle, which is filled to, in this case, 4,500 PSI. I've got a rifle here that if I filled to 4,500 PSI, I've overfilled it, it could be dangerous. I don't want to do that. So the regulator just gates that down to a certain specific spot, which I choose, and it fills my gun to the same pressure all the time. Now the nice thing about the externally adjustable regulator is after I bleed the line, it's important to bleed it first, I can just twist it and these two pieces right here move around and you can lower the pressure a little bit, you can raise it up, you can kind of play with that to get the pressure that you want. The old system, the old Huma inline regulator, there was a set screw right in here. This is that little flat blade looking piece right here and you'd have to take bleed everything out and then take this out of your system, adjust this just a little bit, put it all back together, try it out to see if it's where you want it, and repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and, <laughs> and until you got it just where you wanted it. Um, pros and cons? Well, the nice thing is this is kind of buried in there, so once you've got your pressure set, that's it. You're not going to bump it, you're not going to do anything. The downside to it is, if you wanted to change your pressure, you're going to be wasting a lot of air during the setup process getting this thing just right. And the smallest little bit of movement makes a big difference on this guy. This one here, I'll take it apart and I'll show you, it's got that same set screw. And that comes into play when you are maxing this out. And this maxes out at 250. In order to do that, from the factory, they have it set a little bit lower. You've got to break it apart. It's a little um, C-clip, a little uh, with the two pins on it. Uh, so you'll have to take that out, and you'll have to take out the Bellevue washers. They look like normal washers, except they got a little curve in them. You have to take those out, restack them, put everything back in. I did it to mine. It's really not that hard. You just take your time, read the directions. By the way, the directions are online. They do leave a little bit to be desired. Like I was saying, though, you you restack your Bellevue washers, right in there is the little C-clip. Put everything back in there, put your C-clip back in, in place, and then you want to max this thing out, so you twist it so it's maxed out, and then you adjust this. And you're going to go through that until you see, it doesn't matter, at this point you can go to 60 if you want, for an absolute max, and that's where mine is, to be honest with you. And then when I set it back up again, I just twist it back down a little bit. That gives me a little bit of leeway on the top end. I'll get to that uh, in a minute as well. So I just want a little bit of twist down to hit that 250 mark every time. Now you guys can see I'm kind of, you know, turning this hard. There's a little set screw right in here, a standard set screw hex head right in here, which adjusts the tension, the twisting force required to set this up. Once I get mine set, the chances of me moving it around are pretty slim, but I still want to have that option. So I tightened mine up pretty good. I don't want it to get bumped. When it came to me, when I originally took it out of the box, it was nice and smooth and nice and easy to turn. Uh, but I, I just want mine to lock in place a little bit. So as I stated, this is an inline Huma regulator. And with me, I've got it truly in line. Um, but this is a DIN fitting, a D-I-N. So you'll find those on scuba tanks. You'll find them on uh, a lot of air gun filling bottles have a DIN fitting. This is the Omega Patriot and it's got a foster fitting as a discharge. So I wasn't really about to take this all the way down to an eighth BSPP fitting and screw it in here because that's a lot of strain on uh, those tiny little threads. Also I thought about you know I could put a female fitting on the end of this but again, that's a lot of strain, potential strain, on this fitting. So I decided to just stick with the line and really put it in line. I got a shoelace on either side. 
and that allows me a couple different things. One, it's kind of clumsy. It clunks around. Sometimes it falls off the table. You know, it's, it is it is a little clunky and a little hard to deal with that way, but it allows me to take it out of the system when I need to refill. When it comes to regulators, you don't want to, you can't flow air backwards through them. That's why I've got this piece of blue tape with the arrow on here to remind me, hey, air goes this way. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you can't fill through this. So if you stick it on your bottle through your DIN fitting, you'll have to unscrew it and then put on your little adapter here to refill your bottle. Keep that in mind as well. For me, I, could, I just take it out of the system real easy with a quick release and then I'm refilling and then I put it right back into the system. So these are my adapters. I got a DIN to, I don't know what size here, to I don't know what size there, probably one eighth, to a best fittings male foster. And I just screw that on, just like I'm screwing it into a bottle with a DIN. Tighten it down. Other side, same thing. A male DIN to a male foster. Tighten that down. Hook them up. And I'm ready to, I'm ready to use it. Um, it's a little easier, like I said, if you got a DIN here, screw it onto your bottle, hook up your fill line, and fill, fill your gun. Do your thing. Uh, one modification I did make to this is this little electric uh, digital readout uh, in bar. These come in PSI as well. Uh, I got this from Air Guns of Arizona. I got all of this from Air Guns of Arizona. Uh, normally, though, you're going to see a standard gauge on this, just like this little guy right here. Just a standard gauge, which is fine. And if I know that I'm going to be running around with this, I'm going to be beating it up, I'm just going to be kind of rough on it, then I'll take off this digital, uh, digital readout and maybe swap it with uh, a, a mechanical gauge because I don't want to beat this thing up. These are a little more pricey. Speaking of price, so these are not cheap. Inline regulators, I haven't seen any really that are cheap, uh, but it's made by Huma, so you know you're getting quality when you spend the money. This one here without the digital gauge was 250 bucks. So I know that's a lot of money. And especially if you just drop 700 bucks on a tank, now you're like, oh man, uh, another 250 bucks for a regulator. You know, it's like, is that really worth it? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on you, your style of shooting and where you're trying to go. I have, I, I, I only use non-regulated fill lines at competition when I'm using the bottles that are provided. At home, in my practice, in my training, I'm always filling through a regulated bottle. Sorry, through a regulated line. It's just become part of my habits. I rely on it and I can do those tweaking and tuning and stuff like that. I can do all that and not have to worry about overfilling my rifle. So I use it in a couple different ways. The first way is tethering. That's when you, you're filling through this, it fills to a certain number, uh, I fill this uh, gun to 250 bar, uh, so maybe I'll fill it to 240 bar. Just throwing round numbers out there for whatever reason. And then I can sit behind the gun and I can just shoot and shoot and shoot. And what I'm doing is instead of draining this bottle, I'm draining this massive bottle. So I can sit out there and shoot hundreds and hundreds of rounds at the same pressure and my gun is happy, it's shooting very consistently. And everything is just right in the world <laughs> because of this inline regulator. The second way I use it is once I get it set and once I trust it, you got to lay down this, this groundwork and make sure that you trust the device before you use it in this way. Fill up your gun, check the pressure. Hey, it filled to 250. Great. Check it again. Next time you fill, 250. 250. And you just keep checking it and checking it until you feel confident this does not, the pressure doesn't waver on you. Or if it does, maybe it's only a PSI or two or whatever, uh, sorry, a bar or two. Uh, once you trust this device to work and it has never let you down, okay, so what I do now is crank my bottle on. I know my gun's all gonna fill to 250 and it's gonna stop. So I'll start loading my magazine. So it allows me to just to do other things. I'm not worried about overfilling the gun. And I really like that from a safety standpoint. I really dig having that where it just stops filling at this number. Um, so 
that's the value you're going to get out of having one of these. Oh, also, if you have a non-regulated gun, you have a bell curve like this. You, you start out shooting real slow when you first fill up, and then your uh, feet per second goes up, and it peaks out, and then it comes back down, and that's when you're actually draining your air. This will allow you to pick a point in there, and let's say, I mean, just for round numbers, uh, I guess, round numbers, yeah, let's say you're at, you filled a 250, at 200 you're at your peak, and what, uh, 175 or something, you start to drop off. You really start to see that point of impact drop. You can come up to about, let's, let's call it 225 or somewhere in that neighborhood. You can fill your gun to that and you can just sit there. And that will allow you to zero your scope, zero your rifle to your scope, um, check, your, uh, check your distances, check your holdovers, check your clicks, and do all that in that consistent range and have it right there and be consistent. So guys, one more thing is if you get one of these and you have this in your system, you have to start using this bleeder. Okay, even if it's direct, directly screwed into your bottle via the DIN fitting, you, if you use the bleeder on the bottle, you still have air in this line because the air doesn't go backwards through the regulator. So you have to start using the bleeder on the regulator. Um, that's pretty important because you don't want air trying to go backwards through there. It's bad for it. Uh, oh, one more thing. Let me show you guys this thing working. Uh, I'll show you the gauge here. And then I'll show you on my digital gauge on my um, Red Wolf. I'll show you the digital gauge on there and we can see how well they meet, meet up. Okay. So I'll adjust to my 250. I've got a little pencil line on here that marks 250. It's on both sides. And I know exactly where to put this so that it's going to hit that 250 mark. So I'd recommend that as well. Okay, shut that, make sure my bleeder's turned off. And I'll bring you guys in close to take a look at this. All right, so you can see the gauge going up and doing its thing and it's got the readout here. And now this is the cool part is once I get close to 250, this slows down a little bit and it just takes its time getting to that, getting those last couple of bar in. It's just going to take its time until it hits that 250 mark. And that's good. That's something I can rely on every time I fill the bottle. And that's something I want to rely on. I don't want it to race to 250 and then stop right away. So again, use this bleeder. And what this bleeder is going to do is it's going to bleed both the outlet and the inlet side of the regulator. There you go. No air in this, no air in that. <laughs> so guys, that's pretty much all I've got for you for this video. Um, it's an inline regulator. It's all it does is regulate air going to your rifle. And the externally adjustable part, I think that's really handy to have. I'm glad I upgraded. Um, and they don't actually sell this model anymore. This has been discontinued. So this is the only option out there. Um, $250, is it worth it? Well, I've used this equipment to get a bunch of these. <laughs> so in my opinion, it is worth it. It is worth it for the safety aspect. It's worth it for the training aspect and to learn every little detail about your rifle. Um, but that's my opinion. Of course, it's your choice to make if this is going to fit into your setup or not. So that's all I've got for you today, guys. As always, thanks for watching and happy shooting. <music>